American Family News. I'm Rusty Keith. With newly elected House Speaker Kevin McCarthy at the helm, the House will vote on a rules package to set procedures for the 118th Congress. Florida Congressman Corey Mills details the rules package. My vote went to Kevin McCarthy was because of these votes. So things like, for example, uh, a motion to vacate the chair, 72-hour notice prior to votes on legislation, single-subject bills and germaneness, uh, the formation of the church-style commission, which allows us to target and investigate the weaponization of federal government. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy could face his first major challenge today as Republicans introduce rules for how the chamber will operate. House Majority Whip Tom Emmer. You're opening up the Capitol for the first time since the pandemic to the public. You're eliminating proxy voting and making people come to work. They haven't been doing it for years. Texas Governor Greg Abbott is criticizing Joe Biden's trip to El Paso, calling for him to do more on border security. Griff Jenkins has more from Eagle Pass, Texas. CBP sources tell me that there were 518 migrant encounters in the El Paso sector in the last 24 hours, yet President Biden in that sector didn't see a single migrant, a senior administration official saying there just weren't any at the center when Biden arrived. Completely coincidental, they haven't had any today. Texas Governor Greg Abbott did meet the president in El Paso on the tarmac, handing him a letter which said, among other things, even the city you visit has been been sanitized of the migrant camps which had overrun downtown El Paso because your administration wants to shield you from the chaos that Texans experience on a daily basis. Fox reporter Sarah Carter is in El Paso. I think what you're hearing from the residents is a real concern here. They feel as though uh, you know, their state has been literally taken over, uh, that no one's listening to them. I can tell you this, I've been covering this border for 18 years plus. Uh, I've never seen anything quite like this. And if I was going to say there was one major concern for me right now, it's not only our children and the effect that an open border policy has had on them, especially with fentanyl and the trafficking of fentanyl and narcotics into the United States, but the children that are actually being trafficked. And right now as we're sitting here, there are children across that border that have literally suffered what is unexplainable uh, to most people. And they are being trafficked into the United States and some of them won't even make it. Meanwhile, a pro-family activist says Biden still hasn't seen the real crisis. Much has been made of the fact that the president hasn't seen the border crisis firsthand since he opened the floodgates when he took office and rolled back all of President Trump's immigration policies. On Sunday, he stopped in El Paso, Texas. And Gary Bauer of American Values says he still hasn't seen the crisis, avoiding any optics he can't blame on Trump and the Republicans. Now Biden's going to do his best uh, imitation of being uh, serious when it, it comes to protecting the borders of the United States. But his words are worth absolutely nothing. Overworked Border Patrol agents stopped 2.38 million illegal border crossers in 2022, almost 200,000 a month. And that doesn't include the several hundred thousand that were estimated to have gotten past the CBP. Bauer says last week, Biden announced a couple new policies to expel illegal immigrants from Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua and Venezuela in an attempt to convince the American people he's doing something to solve the problem. What he really intends to do is, on the one hand, blame Republicans for any problem. And two, he's beginning to put things on the table that inevitably will lead to amnesty for millions of people here illegally. And Bauer says while the trip over the weekend was all smoke and mirrors, it does signal one rather important thing. I see the uh, interest by President Biden or the acknowledgement by President Biden uh, that there's a, an issue at the border as uh, probably a pretty solid indication that he is definitely going to run for re-election. I'm Steve Jordahl. A key business indicator upcoming this week, the Labor Department releases its December snapshot of inflation at the consumer level on Thursday. More news online at AFN.net and the AFN mobile app. I'm Rusty P.
Jesus wrote my name into the blessed book of life and took my many sins away.
in sweet glory land. But I know there's a place in that city for me, a personal palace by the Savior's own hand. Jack at Wooden Earth from Salt Lake City, Utah, and you're listening to KNBBC Revival Radio. There's a country where no twilight shadows the Image 
other loves just flee.
ravished and scattered o'er the world. They preached the gospel fearlessly, though some were martyred and to lions hurled. They marched along in victory. Faith, I understand 
God holds this whole world in his hand By his word he made everything He spoke the world in six days Made a man from the clay It's all in that every word book He put the manna on the ground Made the lions to lay down Kept a man alive in a whale If he could walk on the water Me the fourth man in the fire Then he could give me his every word book I believe that I have an every word Bible I just read it today I have an every word Bible the doctors and scholars might say it's a lamp to my feet and a light to my path it's hidden down deep in my heart oh i have an every word bible right here in my king james bible yes i have god's every word bible right here in my king from the studios of KNVBC Revival Radio on the campus of North Valley Baptist Church and Golden State Baptist College in Santa Clara, California. Here's your host, Mike Moyer, the KNVBC Station Manager. And a very good Monday to you. Thank you so much for listening to KNVBC Revival Radio broadcasting from, well, very wet and rainy Santa Clara, California. And I'm excited today on Mondays. I like to have what I call Ministry Mondays. And uh, we haven't had it for a few weeks, but I am honored to have a special guest in the studio today, Brother Luke Flood. Welcome to the studio today. It is my honor to be here. I don't know how much of a special guest I am, but it's a privilege to be here. Oh, you're it. special. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in what kind of way? <laughs> I hope it's a good way. Oh, a very good way. <laughs> But we're honored to have you today, and we'll we'll be asking Brother Luke some questions. If you have any questions for him, uh, you can email us, of course, info at knvbc.com. You could also uh, send in any song requests that you have. You could do it by text message as well. That number is 951-215-6822. And we want to talk about the ministry today, and uh, we'll get into a song in just a moment. But Brother Luke, just briefly, I know you grew up here, but give us your testimony and uh that would be great. I did. Yes, I. Uh, my parents actually met here. They both moved from different parts of the country. They were they were both part of the singles ministry. Met, married here. 
Uh, and so I was born uh, almost literally in the nursery. So mm. it basically, <laughs> it felt like it. My mom was actually one of the superintendents, but uh, raised, uh, had the privilege to go to uh, North Valley Baptist schools all the way from kindergarten, graduated North Valley Baptist schools, went to Golden State Baptist College, uh, graduated there, actually graduated there with my master's degree. Wow. I was waiting for my wife to graduate. <laughs> so, but it was good, uh, good training there. So uh, North Valley has been, uh, it's just been an incredible thing for my family, my entire family, my, even my extended family has been here. Uh, for many many decades now, and so it's a uh, it's it's incredible. You have a great family, and we look forward to hearing more about your ministry in just a moment. Well, let's get right into the song. Jesus is coming soon, and uh, if you have any questions, send it on in for Brother Luke Flood. Trouble sometimes are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear now is at stake. Humbling your heart. Saves from the chastening rod. Seek the way pilgrims trod. Christians away. Jesus is coming soon. Morning or night or noon. Many will many be will there. Be there noon. Trumpets will Trumpets sound. Be sound. The whole of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the sky. Going where no one, where no one dies. Heaven will will soon be your happy forevermore when we meet on that shore free from all care rising up in the sky telling this world goodbye home we then shall fly glory to share jesus is coming soon Trumpets will Trumpets loudly sound. sound. The whole of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the sky. Going where no, no, where no one dies. Heaven will bow. Jesus is coming soon. Morning or night or noon. Many will be there. Divine trumpets will sound. The whole of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the So, Brother Luke Flood, you were uh, here at Golden State Baptist College. You graduated. You said the master's degree. What year was that? That was in 2015. 2000. So, wow, you're an old man. I, <laughs> sometimes I feel like it, for sure. So, 2015. Well, how did you know what God had for you? How did you feel the call of God you know, as far as ministry goes? Yeah, I definitely um, started uh, really when I became a bus captain. Uh, in college, I became bus captain right there in the summer between my sophomore and junior year. And uh, there was a time where uh, I was working a security job during college, and that was what I was doing for money. But uh, it became where I was sitting at a desk, looking at screens, and really I was being paid by the security company, but I was working on the bus mm. all the time. <laughs> it was literally like a 40 hour job for me to think about new ideas, creating bus flyers, trying to divide up sections and things. And so it was, it came to the point where the, the job didn't really bring me any fulfillment. It wasn't, it wasn't what brought, I, I didn't feel like mm-hmm. there was anything of lasting value in it. Mm-hmm. And so I, I lived for the weekends and that's what I enjoyed. That's what I loved doing. That's what brought me fulfillment and uh, really from that responsibility. And so I was like, why don't I why don't I just do this full time? Mm. For me personally, I've never had a specific moment where I felt like God has called me to a specific ministry or called me to full time ministry. Um, but Pastor Treber actually really helped me with this and similar in his own life. But it came to a point where he just kept volunteering. He was available, he was willing, and he just volunteered. And I know that there have been other preachers in similar situations like that. And I've heard, and I believe that God does call people to the ministry. I believe that wholeheartedly that there is a call that God has a purpose for your life. But for me personally, in my own life, 
God just kept on opening doors mm, and I just kept up. walking through them. And um, I know for a fact right now that I'm in God's will uh, to be on staff here at North Valley Baptist Church and to work very closely with Pastor Treber mm. and obviously with the rest of the staff. And, and really God's through all of that, God's given me as the Bible says, the desire is my heart. It, I yeah. get to do things that I love. I get to do things yeah, right. that I, I I enjoy everything that I do. And so God's just walked me through every step of that. And uh, I've had godly counsel along the way. And, you know, uh, Pastor Treber even said, you know, uh, in even his own life, but uh, if all these people that we've helped, all these people that we've won to Christ, you know, if we weren't supposed to be doing that, I think God's <laughs> going to be okay in the end. You know, maybe maybe this wasn't my full, this wasn't God's purpose for me, but I, I think God will be okay with, with what I've done for him. So, Well, I think uh, exactly, sorry, exactly what God has for you. And uh, I, I'm excited. Uh, for to be, to be able to work with you, I enjoy working with you. You have a passion for the things that it's, you do. It's my privilege, brother. Why are you kidding me? <laughs> I, I, I love working with you. I tell people I get paid to play. <laughs> That's how I feel. I feel like if if I wasn't paid for this, I would still want to do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Uh, this is what God has for me, and I'm so thankful that He made us specifically for a task. Hmm. Uh, he made you with those desires and those ambitions and those. Uh, just enjoy doing uh, what you do. And so tell us that uh, you did all of that work while you're security, yes. working on the bus and everything. <laughs> yes. And so what do you do now? Absolutely. So I am the bus director here at the North mm. Valley Baptist Church. I've done that since I graduated college back in 2015. And so right out of college, Pastor uh, was able to kind of, I did a quick internship for a summer and then became full-time staff. And since then, my definitely my responsibilities have grown mm. over <laughs> over the years. Right. Uh, but it, it, everything I do, I, I love it. So I, I now I get to work very closely on pastors conference. Mm-hmm. I get to work very uh, heavily on youth conference as well, um, as well as some of the big days that we have our, at our church. Uh, uh, for instance, some of our different soul winning days or, or Easter uh, and different uh, big days roundup Sunday. I get to head up all of that stuff. So it, it's it's incredible. And uh, you do a great job at all of it. Uh, he is very good at organizing large events, and so uh, I've, I've tried my best. I appreciate your compliments there. I don't know. Uh, I've tried my very best. I, I do think that God definitely has uh, uh, bent me that way because I enjoy it. I mean, yeah. I, I tell people it, it's so funny because even last year at Easter in the park, mm-hmm. I, we ordered we ordered. But the more get this, we ordered forty five thousand. 45,000 <laughs> Easter eggs for all wow. of our different things that, that we were lot. even doing more this year. So I already have the quote <laughs> for it and everything. But you know, when, what other job do you get to order 45,000 Easter right? eggs and you get to, you get to have them all and, and organize all the different events. And it, it's, it's amazing. And that is awesome. We have a comment from Brother Nathan there in British Columbia. He says, good morning, uh, Brother Moyer, Brother Flood. I trust that you're having a great morning. I actually heard him on a word for the wilderness. Oh, no. Uh, Brother I Joe Motes last year. I don't know That's if I right. can endorse the, a word for the wilderness. special Christmas broadcast. It says, one question. And I think we preemptively answered this one. Uh, how did you know that God called you into full-time ministry? And so uh, you answered that already. But uh, Brother Nathan, thank you so much for uh, sending that in. By the way, if you have a question for Brother Flood, or if you want to send him some hate mail, go ahead and email us here. Info. I get some of that. <laughs> <laughs> info at knvbc.com. While we listen to this song, Farther Tempted Along. and tried we. Made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long while there are others living about.
Cheer up, my brother. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. When we see Jesus coming in glory, when He comes from Then we shall meet Him in that bright mansion. We'll understand it all by and by. Understand why. Cheer up, my brother. Live in the sun.